Hi everyone, it's Chowan, and I'm with and my friend, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, yeah, he doesn't drink coffee, uh, but he's drinking tea right now. I'm drinking coffee. Look at all this lipstick over here that got on my teeth, and Anthony was just like, as soon as he hugged me, he was like, you got lipstick on your teeth. I'll help you out. I wouldn't have you on video looking crazy. Thank you. This is just like, remember, um, back in the 1980s, Sade, she was singing on like Soul Train or something, and she looked beautiful, but she had lipstick on her teeth, like right here. So I even tell like, people that I didn't really love her, because if you really love somebody, you wouldn't let them go on national television with lipstick on her teeth. Right. You don't let that happen to the people you love. Right, so I thank you for pointing that out. So now, I'm fine-ish. So today, we are going to be doing a reaction video to Joyner Lucas's I'm Not Racist. That video has completely blown up on the book face, um, Twitter, social media. Instagram. Instagram, and uh, lots of reaction videos. Why is it so big? And both of us are sort of like, hmm, I don't know. This video, it's not particularly the freshest the most groundbreaking, but everybody's just like, whoa, fire emojis. <clears throat> Let's start. With all due respect, I don't have pity for you black niggas. That's the way I feel. I'm screaming black. <laughs> so this is a little bit awkward because even though we're both Obviously, both of us in Seoul, which is Korea, nobody's gonna get offended because they don't know what it means. But um, I feel uncomfortable. Call a nigga this, nigga that. Call everybody nigga and get a nigga mad. As soon as I say nigga, then everyone react. Wanna swing at me and call me racist because I ain't black. Yeah, we had a long discussion about when a non black person is allowed to use the N word. And Anthony? They're not. Never. It's, it seems like it should come across that simple mm -hmm. but some people just refuse to be told they can't do something which is weird to me because i feel like we go through life being told there are certain things you can and certain things you can't do and this comes down to at the very least a willingness to be considerate of others and if you have no willingness to be considerate of others then yeah, I'm allowed to call you racist. And yeah, you might get hit in the face. And we were talking about the Ta-Nehisi Coates video. Uh, uh, for white people, I think the experience of being a hip hop fan and not being able to use the word nigga is actually very, very insightful. It will give you just a little peek into the world of what it means to be black. Because... <laughs> Because to be black is to walk through the world and watch people doing things that you cannot do, that you can't join in and do, you know? And so I think there's actually a lot to be learned from refrain. I just find it so interesting that the majority of America, they have spent so many years, you know, generations doing whatever they wanted to do and saying whatever they wanted to say, steal the land, enslave people, whatever, that just the idea of not being able to say a certain word it drives them absolutely crazy. It's in the song, why can't I? But that's that's also the privilege is that you don't take it upon yourself to understand why you shouldn't do something. You put that onus on other people to make you feel like you shouldn't do it. Like it shouldn't be so much that I have to go out of my way and just like lay down a history lesson to make you less willing to use the word, you should be able to just say in your mind, like, this person is offended to the point where they might be pushed to violence and maybe I should just like back up on, maybe just say it in your house, just away from other people. Like if, if you need to say it that bad, like go into a room in your house, go into a closet, like put a bag over your house, I'm like, Figure out a way, just not do it in front of people who are offended by it. It doesn't seem like it should be that hard. Right, if we're encouraged to not tell women that, hey, you look fat in that dress, then what's the big deal about refraining from saying a certain word, you know? And to be fair, even if you do do it in the closet in your house, you're still wrong for it. Talking about slavery like you was around back then, like you was picking cotton off the fucking ground back then, like you was on the plantation getting down back then. Jordan, this reaction is my reaction. It's like, <laughs> see a black man aiming his gun, but I'd 
rather see a black man claiming his son. This idea of not claiming your sons is nonsensical. There are, there are even studies that show that black men are parenting their children as much as any other race of people are. But mm. no one wants to read those because you like holding on to your generalizations. You like holding on to the stereotypes and what feels better as truth to you. I feel like this has a lot to do with a lot of white Americans not knowing any African Americans, to be honest. Who was it? Was it Dave Chappelle who said, you know, like I guess a lot of my black friends, they have lots of white friends now. A lot of my white friends, they have like one black friend now. You know, it's, it's progress in that finally, you know, it's kind of sad though, that if you're white, having like one black friend is sort of like an improvement from the past when you would have no black friends. But the question still is, how much of a friend is that one black friend? Mm -hmm. Do you actually know that person? Or is this just like- Somebody you hang out with at work. Ron who's on your bowling league. Right. Like you don't really know Ron. You don't know anything about Ron's life. You're just like, Ron's black and I like Ron. So therefore, you can't be racist. For one day you're done, I mean, you're still trapped in a rut. I work my ass off and pay my taxes for what? So you can keep living on free government assistance, food stands for your children, but you still trying to sell them for some weed and some liquor. Or a fucking babysitter, why you party on the road? Cause you ain't got no fucking gold. You already late. You motherfuckers need to get your damn priority straight. Wait. It's like you proud to be fake. But you lazy as fuck. And you rather sell drugs and get a job and be straight. That you would rather sell drugs than have a legitimate job. No one would no rather one. sell drugs no one. than have a job that could actually take care of you. you know the reason why they can't have a job? Because they got arrested for something stupid before and now they have a record that keeps them from getting actual jobs they might want. Right. And then when you can't get the right job and when the, the minimum wage is so low that you can't actually provide for maybe not yourself or your family with that minimum wage job, you look for alternatives and sometimes that's an alternative and even if you don't have a record i think i just read a study that says that if you have an ethnic sounding name you're less likely to get a call back for a job interview and it's not just black names it's asian names as well but even once you get the interview you still have to, like you still have to get called back after the interview right and once you come in it's like it's like okay uh lisa johnson and then it comes this young lady, it's like, oh, you're Lisa Johnson? People have told me this, where it's like, wow, you know, on the phone, I couldn't tell you were Asian. <laughs> it's like, I come in, it's like, uh, girl, you knew my name, okay? I've got an ethnic <laughs> ass name. <laughs> a little white girl down the street named Chawa. Everybody in America is encouraged to hustle. You know, everybody's just like, hustle, make money. Fast-paced lifestyle. Fast-paced lifestyle. And uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, I remember he did this one video where he was talking to a bunch of high school guys. My belief is that if you're a great drug dealer, you'd be a great businessman. I just believe that because it's the same game. You're selling, you're working it. Like, you're good at it. Or if somebody's, <laughs> if he's, if somebody's good at it, they'd be even better at flipping sneakers or gear, or going to the thrift store and flipping because it's the same fucking move. And then when you have the freedom of being not scared to get caught, now you're fucking moving fast. Because when you're selling drugs, you gotta think about that extra dimension of getting caught. But when you're selling fucking t-shirts, now you're a fucking entrepreneur and everybody thinks, you know, like people putting you on a pedestal. Maybe if you grew up in a middle class family, then that hustle, you can put it towards starting, I don't know, dad helps you start an LLC and then you can become like a freelance designer. But if you grow up in an area where you don't have high speed internet and you don't have somebody who can tell you, hmm, maybe you should have an LLC, maybe you should like start a side business, right? And what if you have to go to library to like get on the computer? Then I mean, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna work for minimum wage or are you gonna be smart and you're gonna do something that's actually gonna make you significant money, return on investment for your time? Can you really fault anybody for getting into anything that you know gives you extra money? You really can't. It's not like this is new. Not like we haven't seen people sell drugs before. Like and like you had bootleggers in the 1920s who were doing the same thing. Right. And wasn't it um, from The Wire? Who's the character Omar? Mm -hmm. Where he's talking about like you know the real the real gangsters. They're the ones with the briefcase and the necktie. Oh. 
Okay. You're stealing from those who themselves are stealing the lifeblood from our city. You are a parasite who leeches off Just like you, the culture man. of drugs. Excuse me? What? I got the shotgun. We got the briefcase. It's on the game, though, right? Can't escape problems. You can pray for some change, but can't break a dollar. Got nobody else to blame, so you blame Donald. You fuck the world with a Make America Great condom. My boy's been back. I'm not racist. My sister's boyfriend's black. I'm not racist. My sister in law's baby cousin Tracy got a brother, and his girlfriend's black. My head's in the cloud. Heard it's not a yeah, knowing somebody of another race doesn't necessarily mean that you're not racist. Right. Just because you have a baby with somebody from another race doesn't mean that you're not racist. Oh man, that doesn't change anything at all. That doesn't, because it's sort of like uh, you can say, oh, you know, like I'm married to a woman, so that that automatically makes me a feminist, but you could be your wife, you could be your girlfriend, that's like one of the least feminist things you can do. Or just generally not care about the things that they think. Making parallels between men who say that they're feminist and men who say that they're allies to um, black people and minorities. I feel like there's, okay, this video is talking about the easy stereotype of what a racist white dude would look like and sound like. Mm. All right. But personally, I feel like there's two camps of white racists, and that is, of course, the Trump sort of stereotype, but there's also like a bunch of like well-educated guys who, and oftentimes they're um, college educated, they live in liberal cities. They're super racist too. There's um, I don't know which outlet claimed it. I don't know if it was like New York Times or Washington Post, but hipster racism. Yes. It's the Lena Dunham effect. Ugh, she annoys me. She, uh, I'm pretty sure she annoys a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of fans of Lena Dunham, especially right now. Yeah. But there's there's an idea where you say that I'm a feminist and I respect women and that I understand cultural differences, but in actuality, you don't. Like, you make this assumption, and, yeah. then, and then you go around making all these mistakes without fully atoning. Because if you keep making the same mistakes... You just don't care. You, you obviously don't care. You just care. don't care. You're not trying to be any better at it. Right. Because if that were the case, then we wouldn't have these problems. Or you would just quiet the fuck down. No, I almost feel as though a lot of especially well-educated, more liberal white people, it's almost like when they're criticized for doing something that may be racist, they get really offended because it's sort of like, I'm one of the good guys, like, I'm trying. I try, I try to understand you, and it's like, my efforts are not good enough, fuck you. You know, that's sort of like what well, that, like that's saying. Well, that's why we come back to why being called a racist is such a painful thing, because it's like, you legitimately don't feel like you are. Right. But the only reason you don't is because you don't really understand what it means. You don't understand exactly. what you're actually doing because you don't want to. You think actually it's those white people who claim that they're total allies and are social um, warriors, like social um, issue warriors that are in some ways the scariest. Mm -hmm. Because they're on this quest to prove that they're not racist, that they're the ultimate in sort of like progressive wokeness. And so to have anybody point out that mm, maybe you're not as woke as you think you are, all of a sudden it's sort of like, I'm not the white savior? Holy shit. Not enough jobs for all the men in your house. Maybe we should build a wall to keep the Mexicans out. Or maybe we should send them all to the ghetto for now. I'm not racist. And I never lie, but I think there's a disconnect between your culture and mine. I worship the Einsteins, study the Steve Jobs, but you ride too far. No, you don't. <laughs> what? Worship the Einsteins? <laughs> You beat up the boys and girls who worship the Einsteins and the Steve Jobs. Come on. American culture, pop culture, is actually black culture that's been mainstreamed by corporations, right? Yeah, that's another discussion. Yeah. So it's sort of like, you're not really worshiping the Einsteins and Steve Jobs. Sorry. Dick like you was a fucking god, oh my god. And all you care about is rapping and stunting and being ratchet and that's the nigga within you. Music right in your brain and slowly start to convince you. Then you let your kids listen and then the cycle continues. Blame it all on the menu. Blame it on those drinks. Blame it on everybody except for your own race. Blame it on white privileges. Blame it on white kids and just blame it on white citizens. Aim it the vice president. <laughs> Bunch of class clowns. Niggas standing on the field as a flag down. How dare you try to make demands for this money? You gonna show us some respect. You gonna stand for this country, nigga? Ugh. Stand for 
this country. Okay, when a white person says the N word, not with the the one that with ends the with the E-R, A, but the, the E-R, the hard one. The hard. E. You cringe. It's super cringy. Well, uh, and again, this is Joyner Lucas, like pushing the point part of it. So I think that that point in the video mm -hmm. is like the the easiest one to connect. Mm -hmm. He tells you exactly what the problem is and why we kneel. And add to the fact that Colin Kaepernick started kneeling after he talked to other players who were uh, military vets. And he wanted to figure out uh, a healthy in-between, what mm -hmm. they would feel more comfortable with. Right. And kneeling was something they were okay with. Like, you can protest, but you're still showing deference. Right. But it's not enough because it's not so much that we don't like the way you protest. We don't like that you're protesting, and we especially don't like the fact that you're protesting essentially against us. And by us, I don't mean me. We're hurt. <laughs> Damn. We'll continue. Eminem. A lot of people say that he has a hood pass. Still white. And I think he kind of understands that and he respects that about her. You can still be embraced though. Yeah. Like, but you know what? It, I think I uh, read an article recently about how white privilege is helping a lot of mediocre-ish white rappers like Macklemore. Ugh. Well, I mean, who's, who's buying all these albums? Yeah. White kids. White kids. But then that also begs the question, like, you want to, you buy music that you think is cool, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to emulate the rappers that you think are cool, and you're not allowed to be as cool as them in that you can't say what they say. Like, you can dress like them. Mm -hmm. You can, like, say almost, like, 99% of what they say. You can curse. You can, like, call women, like, bitches and hoes and stuff, but you can't use that word, you know? So it's sort of like the ultimate sort of, like, if you're a cool white boy, Cool white girl yeah maybe you can get like a hood pass you know and like say it but otherwise it's sort of like i'm not cool enough to say that who the fuck are you to tell me that i'm not cool enough to use that word? also generation change like current young people like i don't i don't know how they work that's a different kind of game like they they'll allow for things that i probably won't but like they come from a different time essentially like mm. like our generation has a different viewpoint on some things. Like, there, there are kids now, like, yo, everybody can say it. Like, I don't care who says it. Like, it doesn't bother me. But maybe they just haven't had that realization the way that we have. Maybe they haven't been taught, like, the pain and suffering that comes with the word the way that we have. And maybe they don't want to be. Like, I, I honestly can't blame kids who say, like, I don't want to, like, have to internalize more trauma because like, I have enough to begin with. I can't take you nowhere without people pointing fingers, pants hanging off your ass, you ain't got no home training, put your fucking pants up, nigga. Put that suit back on, take that durag off, take that gun out your mouth, quit the pitiful stuff, and then maybe police will stop killing you, fuck you, what the fuck? What's wrong with having a gun in your mouth, though? Yeah, Go well. find some nice, man. I don't have any, but I like the way they look. Like, it was always a part of the culture. It's just that once you got a chance to actually see them on your TV, like, that's what hip-hop does. Like, when you started to see Cash Money and you started to see No Limit, and you saw UGK, and you saw all these guys from the South who brought you that culture. Like, the big body cars and, and, the, and the rims and the gold teeth and the chains and everything, that, they were doing that. Well, you know what? I also think, too, that high-end fashion when they legitimized it that's when it was okay like you know uh, Rick Owens his wife who's like this French lady who's like 70 years old she has like gold teeth she has like platinum and gold teeth and she took it obviously from like hip-hop culture yeah and uh, as everyone does I just read an article a couple weeks ago it was like that Taylor and he would make like the he would take Gucci fabric back in the 80s and then he would like create stuff that like all the rappers back in the day would wear until the houses like Gucci or some sort of like house they were just telling him you can't do that these are not official Dapper Dan. is that what that yeah Dapper Dan 
culture. But, culture. But now it's like they're just like, yes, you know, look, we're inspired by Dapper Dan. But back then it was sort of like, no, you can't do that. Okay, the main problem. <laughs> you don't care about my story. <laughs> the hook is that both of them have their preconceived notions about the other. Mm -hmm. And we just want to meet in the middle and like have a greater understanding of each other's races. And nah, you don't. You don't actually want to. In the same way we talk about Lena Dunham. Mm -hmm. Lena Dunham will say that she, she understands and that she only wants the best for other people. Why Why then don't you make the effort to understand these things on your own instead of just like up and making ridiculous statements about other people? I wonder if though like people can be divided into several different camps like there's those who are entitled mm. but then there's I think a growing group of white people I would like to think at least that are not as entitled you know and maybe that's what they're talking about yeah it's kind of Come on, white people, I'm trying to, trying to, you know, like, understand you guys, too. Nah. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it's not that I'm saying I don't want to understand anybody. It's like, but you know, you don't yeah. need to hear one person's story to understand a race of people. Like, it's right. just not that simple. When you make these generalizations and then you sit down, like, tell me your story, you're not trying to change your way of viewing the race. You're trying to change your way of viewing one person. And that is the problem with this video. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, it's just two guys. But it doesn't actually solve anything. Some people would say that starting the conversation is the beginning. Starting the conversation is always a cop out. Because <laughs> once you start it, you have to get to something else. But there are so many people who think that starting the conversation is such a, a grand step. That's the problem. Starting the conversation means so little. It's like the fact that you were willing to sit down and talk, you don't deserve a medal for that. Hmm. Ending the conversation with a resolution that creates something better, mm -hmm. that's what you want. But just starting the conversation, like we've been saying this for years. It's like, well, this is gonna start a conversation. Well, at least we started the conversation. Then what'd you do? Well, if you're white, then you have the privilege of walking away from the conversation back into life. And being unaffected. And Yeah, exactly. Whereas the urgency from the non-whites keeps growing and growing. But as a white person, you can always push it away until a more convenient time. Push it away, push it away, push it away. We'll deal with it later. Yeah. There, there are more pressing issues in the world. Right. All lives matter. What about the chickens? You guys are eating so many chickens. Do you know what the slaughterhouses look like? So when you start a conversation, it never ends because it's sort of like, well, you know, the real issues, we don't have to talk about it until, you know, race war? I don't know. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't get to that point. But I would say that a lot of Trump supporters, Tea Party members, maybe deep down they believe that race war is coming. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying they're wrong. Let's join you know what? I'm not crazy about um, Joyner's uh, response, though, to be honest. Yeah. With all disrespect, I don't really like you, white motherfucker. That's just where I'm at. Screaming, all lives matter is a protest to my protest. What kind of shit is that? And that's one war you'll never win. The power in the word nigga is a different sin. We shouldn't say it, but we do, and that's just what it is. But that don't mean that you can say it just because you got nigga friends. That word was originated for you to keep us under. And when we use it, we know that's just how we greet each other. When you use it, we know there's a double meaning under. And even if I wasn't picking cotton physically, that don't mean I'm not... Do you call your friends the N-word? Like your black friends? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only them. And not everybody. Like, it's... And it's not all between, the time. It's between us. It depends. Depends on who I'm talking to. But it's not like, like, my friends have names. I can't remember them by name. But I can pretty much guarantee you that m the majority of my friends who are not black have never heard me say that before. Ever. Do you ever call your male friends in an endearing way? Like, bitch. 
being a devil's advocate no. here. <laughs> so Probably not. Dog off. I mean, bitch is a derogatory term towards women. No, oh, of course. And I remember uh, hearing an episode of uh, Radio Lab where Jeb Abenrog said that his mom heard him use the word bitch and she got really offended and he was trying to explain it to her like, oh, this is what you call people that you really like. You know, it's like a friendly thing. And so he was at home eating dinner and his mom turned to him and said, will you please pass the salt, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's you know, sort of like a bunch of bros calling each other bitch, you know. But that makes me wonder, so okay, am, I'm a female, so can I say bitch with impunity? Like you can't? Because I mean, you know, like, if obviously I can't use the N word with impunity because I'm not black. And even if I had like a black boyfriend and I had a child who was half black, I still couldn't use the N word. Then you'd be Madonna. Madonna's out of control, man. Madonna's trying so hard to stay relevant. Girl, I feel you. I feel you. But, you know, you can stop. You're a legend. You don't have to try so hard. He's back. Yeah, seriously. Pull back. Chill. More is less. Right. Oh, man. Oh, I'm scared now. <laughs> see, the, see the fear in that place. Nope. Oh, that's not nice. Can't do that. <laughs> Chappelle said, who doesn't like chicken and watermelon? I'm actually not a fan of watermelon. The examples that Joyner gives are kind of weak. Yeah, and, it, and it's stuff that you've heard a million times already. So, so that's where my issue comes up is like, are you really impacting the way he's thinking or is it just the music video? Would, would your average white person hear these things and be like, whoa, even though we say this frequently. There are articles, there are news stories. All this information is there for you, but you don't want to hear it. So why would hearing it one more time from a dude yelling in your face and slapping the hat off your head gonna be the time that really just gets through to you? Two chains, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where I can. Uh... Notice, the Tea Party hasn't said shit about the new tax plan, which is a million times worse than anything that came out from the Obama administration when it comes to keeping the rich rich and... My uh, goodness. No. You don't think so? Recognize it. Because it's, it's put so plainly in front of you. Like, we've talked about all the studies, all of the data, all the information that presents this very logically to you. But human beings aren't logical. And to be But they like to pretend they are, and that's they what like all these pretend. arguments are about. Like you you try to pretend it. America. I 
about your life, so you take mine. I love you and I fucking hate you at the same time. I wish we could trade shoes so we could change lives. So we can understand each other more, but that'll take time. I'm not racist. It's like we living in the same building, but still in the same Wait, no about the trading shoes or no about It's just all over again. You have to fight to try to defend your humanity and like you shouldn't have to try that hard. It's like, hey, yeah. why don't you live like I live and then you'll see that I'm also a person. And what he's gonna say is I, I grew up poor too. I I was poor. We didn't have a lot, but I don't do what you people do. Mm -hmm. And like, there's nowhere to really go from there because you still have to you still have to identify the systemic problems that make it harder for black men, black women, people of color to advance in society. But who wants to admit that? If, if you wanted to outright say this has nothing to do with logic, mm -hmm. this is just based off of my feeling, then we're not going to get anywhere anyway. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in even having the conversation to begin with. There's two sides to every story, and now you know mine. And... The saddest hug ever. What? How, how, how do you just become like buddies after this? Again, this is the Spielberg effect. It's like after, after this very short talk, <laughs> kind of in your face talk where the guy actually knocks the hat off your head, overturns a table, and all of a sudden you're just like, after stroking your beard a couple times, you're like, you know what, you got a point. I didn't see it the way that you were explaining it until right now, and now I'm just like, let's hug it out. I'm your ally. If after Tamir Rice, mm -hmm. you weren't willing to concede the fact that police officers are fallible, that being black makes you targeted in a way like that a 12 year old holding a toy gun on a playground who gets shot like basically right after the officer pulls up to the scene mm -hmm. if that's not enough there's no conversation i can have with you that's gonna make you see anything close to what i want other people to see okay so join our lucas's response Kind of weak, kind of weak. Um, maybe a little bit too, what's the word I'm looking for, conciliatory? Yeah, I can see that. It's, it, it was too much I want you to understand compared to you're just plain wrong. <laughs> Cause you are. So my my my, my son, son, my son, my son, love his name. How do you show sure I pronounce his name right? I like his response. You know why you like his response? There's no buddy buddy shit involved with it. Right. We're not gonna be friends after this. Stop. And we stay minorities, white supremacy, y'all remain majority, superiority. 
So the difference with the my sound response is that he he doesn't make it so personalized mm. as systemic and the fact that you don't want to recognize them is because you benefit from them. Of course. He makes it really simple. He makes it plain. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And there's no, like, what, have you ever had it like this? He's saying, like, no. Like, these are the things that affect Straight us. up, yeah. And these are the things that you have profited from and benefited from over the years. And you don't want to acknowledge them. I really wonder if a lot of people realize that, you know, um, the corporatization mm -hmm. of hip hop. Of hip hop, it makes you also wonder, like, the image that's being um, brought into the mainstream about black culture. It is also through the eyes of like the corporate white dude at the top. It's just like, what's mm -hmm. gonna sell? Right. and it's like you're, you're getting mad because you gave us scraps but now I want more well yeah of course well that's mm -hmm. that's why so many people fight against equality mm -hmm. and equity specifically I think for a lot of white people equality feels like they're losing yeah because for so many years they didn't have to deal with what it feels like to have everything starting at the same level mm -hmm. when you've always been put ahead of the line then actually being asked to form in line suddenly feels like, wait, why? Mm. If you always were allowed to get into the club because a bouncer knew you was like, you don't have to wait in line. That's the scenario I was thinking of. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bar I go to and they're always trying to give me a pay cover. Mm -hmm. And there was one time that I didn't have to pay cover. Now I refuse to pay cover to go in there. I walk up there and like, hey, <laughs> you ready to pay cover? <laughs> nah, I'm not doing that. But that also is a horrible analogy. <laughs> because it, because it, doesn't, it doesn't really fit the scenario. It's because you still you still have something it's it's that for so long it's been that much harder for certain people to get to a place where you've been able to get to more easily and now it's like we're gonna make it a little easier for this group a little bit harder for you but we're all able to make it at the same pace it's like whoa i don't want my pace to slow down if you are someone who agrees with equality like that's what it is you have to accept it Either that or you acknowledge the fact that you don't want equality. Well, so that's that's why I feel like the my son response was so much stronger than Joyner Luke's because it felt like Joyner was was trying to kind of make him feel a little bit better. It's like, no, you just don't understand. Like, you don't you don't get it, and you need to experience what it's like to be me. Where my son was just like, no, you're a fucking monster. Like, you don't give a shit. And I'm not gonna placate you. 
Mm. You need to stop being a monster. And and the thing is, with the video, the the white guy with the Make America Great Again hat, like what he says is meant to kind of be hyperbole, mm -hmm. but there are people who make these arguments on television and in Congress. I feel like Trump has given a lot of white people the permission. And the ammunition. And the ammunition. Um, and an environment where it's sort of like, almost like a bonding experience, like, oh. It's not just me. It's not just me, like you also have these sort of hateful feelings too. Wow, normalizing it. You told me that you watched a couple of these reaction videos and did you agree, disagree with a lot of the reaction videos you saw? Um, basically anytime someone said that this was monumental and this is like the greatest, you know, connection between people who have differing opinions, like, no, it's not. Because I've seen this before, like, I've seen this movie before. I know how this goes. And if that was real life and those who had that conversation, they had the hug afterward, the white dude's gonna go home and say, wow, I made a black friend a day. He's gonna carry on thinking the same things he thought about black. No, he's gonna feel better about himself oh, because yeah, he's gonna be like, I had this. It was a hard conversation, but I had it. Mm -hmm. But did he change? I mean, he didn't. He didn't change. There's like that part of me, that humanist part of me, that finds that difficult to to accept, even though probably that's true. Mm -hmm. That he didn't change. I mean, don't don't think that I don't sometimes wonder if I'm being a little too cynical, but I'm not though. Must not have changed because I mean, all evidence points to the fact that life goes on almost exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it that this "I'm not racist" video is 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 on fire right now? Those people are sad, man, and it makes them feel a little bit better. No, it's not just white people who are. It's no, not just no, white it's people. It's, it's like black people too. No, no, no. It's like yeah. All sorts of people saying that this is fire. Absolutely. And but I mean, I like telling them that they're wrong. Yeah, and I wasn't totally impressed either. What's going on? Why do people think that this is so great? I think that the fact that there are so many people who are getting behind it, mm -hmm. it makes them feel like it's going to lead to some kind of progress. I mean, looking at what that video is, that that he could yell in that dude's face and slap the cap off his head and flip the table and. And then get up and hug him. It's like, wow, maybe we actually can just unite and be together. We can find unity. And the problem with this idea of unity that's being presented to us is that it doesn't actually meet any of the goals that we set. Like, it doesn't create equality, it doesn't actually create justice. It just makes you feel a little bit better because. You gave somebody a hug, and I and you listened to them. Yeah. You sat across with a thoughtful expression on your face and stroked your beard. Mm hmm And you listened wow. to them. I also enjoy Kool Aid. Maybe <laughs> I got this all wrong. But I will say that I've read a lot of um, very thoughtful white people post about how they need to stop being so fragile. And then you start listening, and especially a lot of white women. Um, they've become really self-aware and been like actually we as white women have a lot of blame in upholding um, a lot of um, white fragility and just sort of like racism mm. so I see that a lot so I mean <laughs> I'm trying not to be cynical here I'm trying not that's, to be that's cynical. nice of you but I really like this response the I'm not racist response by my song yeah I mean, it's like I said, it's it's not letting them have a cop out. It's not letting yeah. you feel like you're getting away with anything. Because at the end of the Joyner Lucas video, and again, I feel like Joyner Lucas was trying to make this really clear point on how like we need to all come together. I'm like, that's cute, man. And like, I love that whole that kumbaya idea, man. It's, it's nice, but it's not going to be that simple. It's just not. And so, like I said, I don't blame Joyner Luke. Like, I don't think, like, he just made a terrible video. I blame the people who keep spreading this around. Like, wow, guys, this is the greatest video ever. And, you know, I think 
It's really gonna start a conversation. We've started so many conversations and we never finish them. We never move forward in the conversations. We start them and then we move on. Wow, this is depressing. It's real. And I think that's the reason why we needed that hug scene at the end, the catharsis of the hug. Because just confronting reality and being like, this conversation has been going on for a long ass time and not much has come out of it. That's a hard reality to face. And don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not an easy conversation to have. An easy conversation to have in the least. But you can't just pat yourself on the back. Just for having a conversation. From that point. Because right. it's not enough. Because what's the intention of having a conversation? It's to actually change whatever it needs. It's not, having the conversation in itself is not the point of having the conversation, right? The conversation mm. is supposed to be the first step towards something else. But what is that other thing that hasn't happened yet? So that's, that's why I have such a problem with that hug at the end. After you've explained all these things to that white dude, what is he going to do differently in his life? Is he going to start challenging the ways that he thinks, the way that his friends think? When his friends bring up those antiquated notions that he presented before, will he sit up and say, no, that's not the... That's not a fair way of thinking about an entire group of people. Is he going to do that? Is he going to start marching? Is he going to protest? Is he going to actually do something different? Or is he just going to go home and carry on like he's been for his entire life? And if he's going to do that, it served no purpose whatsoever. What do you guys think? If you really like this video and you think that we're totally wrong, let us know. But I mean, if you agree, and you know, you've seen your Facebook feed be clogged with this video and you're just like, I don't get it, then you know, let us know that too.